Hello and welcome to another exam paper walkthrough. Uh, today we're looking at the uh, GCSE Pass paper revision for Edexcel and we're going to be looking at the November 2020 paper and this is going to be paper 1H. Um, there's going to be a link in the description to this video that will take you to a Google Drive where you can download a copy of the paper. I would strongly recommend you've either done the paper or do the paper alongside the video. Uh, have some music on in the background and uh, subscribe if you like. Okay, and um, straight into question one then. Here are the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence. Write down an expression in terms of n for the nth term of the sequence. <coughs> so um, I never bother overcomplicating these. I look at the common difference. We've got common difference of three, which means that my sequence has got to have a three n in it. And then I look at what I need to do to the number three to get to the number one, and that's going to be minus two. <coughs> Okay, question two, show that. Um, so when we're multiplying the mixed fractions, we need to convert them both to be improper fractions. Uh, so my first step is going to be uh, three times by two is six plus one is seven. So that's going to be seven over three multiplied by three times four is 12 plus three is 15 over four. I then always uh, simplify before I multiply. So I'm going to cancel down by a factor of three. Uh, of three. 3 goes once into that and 5 times into that, uh, which gives me 7 times 5 is 35 over 4. And then 4 goes into 35 fully. 8 times eight times 4 is 32, so I've got 3 left over, which is what we we're asked to show. Okay, question 3. Um, we've got the diagram. It shows four different types of graphs, and then we've got to link it to the statements. Uh, so negative cubic is, well, um, this is going to be a reciprocal. This is going to be a negative cubic. This is going to be a positive cubic, and this is going to be a quad positive quadratic. Uh, so linking them, uh, the negative cubic would be graph B. <coughs> the positive cubic would be graph C, and then the quadratic would be graph D and the reciprocal would be graph A. Okay then, um, these diagrams shows four triangles. Uh, two of the triangles are congruent. Write down the labels, write down the letters of the two triangles that are congruent. Um, so if we look for the most straightforward one, uh, two sides, <coughs> okay, question five. Sean pays ten pounds for twenty-four chocolate bars. He sells the twenty-four chocolate bars for fifty pence. Work out Sean's profit. Um, so you've got choice of methods for this. I'm just trying to work out which one would work better in my head. Um, so I'm going to say the amount of money he makes is going to be 24 times by 0 0.5. So he's going to make £12 and he paid £10. Uh, so in effect, we're doing uh, divided by 10 times by 100 is going to be 120%. So he makes a 20% profit increase. Okay, question six. Uh, this looks like. Right, let's have a look. Uh, ADC, ADC is a triangle. Uh, a, we've got two straight lines. ADE, ABC. Two parallel lines with given two of the angles. Work out the size of angle EAB. So E to A to B. So we want this angle here. Um, okay, so we can say in effect. This angle here is going to be equal to, um, we'll write it down. So B, C, D is going to be equal to 180 minus 148. So that's going to be 32 degrees. And the reason for that is that it's a supplementary or co-interior angle. Uh, 
Um, and then I go for angles in a triangle. So if I know that that's 32, I know that EAB is going to be equal to 180 minus the other two angles, 63 plus 32. So it's going to be 180 minus uh, 95. It's going to be 85. And then my final reason is angles in the triangle. equal 180 degrees okay um question seven the table shows information about the heights and centimeters of a group of year nine girls so we've got least height median height greatest height stem and leaf diagram shows information about the height in centimeters of a group of 15 year nine boys compare the distributions um, of the height of the girls with the distribution of the height of the boys Okay, so uh, I'm going to, if this is for the girls, I'm going to find the same information for the boys. So the least height for boys is 158. Uh, the greatest height for boys is 182. And the median height, so if we've got 15, the median is going to be in the 15 plus 1 divided by 2. It's going to be in the 8th position. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the median for the boys is 168. So it says compare the distributions. Um, so I'm going to go for aiming for, is it a few mark question or one mark? Actually, three mark. Uh, so compare the distribution, the boys have a greater height. If we just go in a bit more detail, so the range for the boys, uh, range for the girls, first of all, is 20. And the range for the boys is, uh, what are we talking, uh, 182 take 158, so it would be 424. Let me just double check that. Uh, 182 minus 158, yeah, uh, 24. Um, so my con um, I would say that the boys have a greater range or the girls have a smaller range. Have a smaller range. I tend to state those, uh, so that's 20 versus 24. And then my second one is for a comparison of the medians normally. Uh, so the, the girls have a smaller median. Median. And again, I tend to state it. So I'd go 165 versus 180. 68 <coughs> okay right um question eight we'll drag my working down let me just undo that okay uh diagram shows a prism placed on a horizontal floor uh, the prism has a height of 3 metres. The volume of the prism is 18 metres cubed. Pressure on the floor is 75 newtons per metre squared. Work out the force exerted by the prism on the floor. Um, so let me just underline my key bits. So I've got a height of 3 and a volume. Uh, I've got the pressure there. And what I want to work out is the force. Uh, so I need to work out the area of the base. Well, the width... For a prism, the volume is equal to the surface area times by the height. Um, and we want to, in fact, work out the surface area. We know that the volume is 18 and we know that the height is 3. So the surface area or the area is going to be equal to 18 divided by 3, so 6 meters squared. 
So the force is going to be equal to the pressure times by the area. I've just rearranged this formula up here. So uh, pressure times area is equal to force. <coughs> so I'm looking at uh, 75 uh, times by 6. Uh, 75 times by 2 is 150, 150 times by 3 is 450, so 450 newtons. Okay, question 9. Uh, write these number in order of size, starting with the smallest. Uh, so they're just trying to check whether they're all in standard form. They're not. We've got mixtures. Uh, so it would make sense... <coughs> to convert them into all into standard form or all into ordinary numbers it doesn't really make much of a difference uh, i'm just trying to work out what would be easier probably uh, if i put them all in standard form so that's going to become uh so if i convert this one's already in standard form uh this one isn't so this is going to become 6.72 times by 10 to the um, and I would need to add one, so I think that becomes minus 3. Uh, this would become 6.72 times 10 to the... I'd need to add 2, so that would become 6. And then this one would become uh, 6.72 times 10 to the minus 4. So the smallest one from this list is this number here, so 0 0.000672. My next smallest one is this one here, which started out as 67.2 times 10 to the minus 4. Uh, next smallest is this one here. No, sorry, this one here, which started out as 6.72 times 10 to the 5. And then the largest one then is 672 times 10 to the 4. Okay, and question 10, given that... <coughs> Uh, a, over, uh, a over B is equal to 2 to 5, and B over C is 3 to 4. Uh, find A to B to C. Okay, um, so I'm going to start this. I'm going to rearrange this one slightly and say that uh, in effect, that's telling you that A to B is 2 to 5. And it's telling you that B to C is uh, 3 to 4. If we try to combine them into A to B to C, we've got uh, 2 to 5 and we've got 3 to 4. So, so our B is in common. The lowest common multiple of those is going to be 15. Uh, to do that, I need to times this first fraction by 3, so that would become 6. And I need to times the second fraction by 5, so that would be 20. So 6 to 15 to 20. Uh, I wouldn't go any more detailed than that. that. That's how I would pretty much set it out. Okay, uh, question 11. Uh, find the value of um, the fourth root of 81 times by 10 to the 8. Uh, so... Uh, I'm going to kind of get rid of the square root symbol. I'm going to write that as 81 times by 10 to the 8 to the power of a quarter. Uh, so 81 is actually uh, 9 squared, which is 3 times 3, to, uh, which is 3 to the power of 4. My pen's gone up a bit. 3 to the power of 4 times by 10 to the power of 8, all to the power of a quarter. We can then do the quarter on each part separately. So 3 to the 4 to the quarter is just 3. And then 3 to the 8 times by a quarter becomes uh, 3 times 10 to the 2. Uh, so I'd write it as 3 times 10 to the 2. Uh, let's just have a look. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. You could have written 300. That would also be fine. Uh, work out the value of 64 to the power of minus a half. Uh, that's going to become, if I get rid of the minus first of all, that's going to become 1 over 64 to the half. 
and then the square root of 64 is 8, so that's just 1 over 8. And then write as a power of 3. So that's going to become 3 to the n divided by 3 squared to the power of n minus 1. So let's rewrite that as 3 to the power n divided by 3 to the uh, 2n minus 2. And then we subtract that, so that's going to become 3 to the power of n minus 2n minus 2, which is going to become, I should put that minus in a bracket, uh, 3 to the minus n plus minus n plus 2. And I'd write that as my answer. I could do it the other way around. I could have it as plus 2 minus n, but I'd write it like that. Okay, uh, so we'll plot that in at the maximum points. So at 250, I'm plotting 5. At 300, I'm plotting 15. At 350, I'm plotting 35. At, 50, at 400, I'm plotting 55. Just move that slightly so I can see my scale. At uh, 450, I'm plotting 70. And then at 500, I'm plotting 80. Uh, for a frequency, uh, cumulative frequency diagram, you want to join it up with as smooth a curve as you can. I tend to rotate my screen or my page so I've got my wrist on the inside of the curve to try and get that smooth curve. This one. Uh, not particularly smooth there, but you, you get the idea. And then the final part of that question says, uh, one says 60% of the group of people have a weekly wage of 630 or less. Uh, you must show how you did your work in. Uh, so uh, first thing I really want to do is work out 60% of 80. Uh, well, 10% uh, is going to be 8. Sorry, 10% is going to be equal to 10% is going to be equal to 8. 40% uh, is going to, 50%, sorry, is going to be equal to 40. Uh, so we're looking for 48 people. So if I rephrase that, 48 of the group of people have a weekly wage of less than 360. Uh, so if I go 360, uh, 360 is going to be hitting, uh, these are going up in 10s. So 360 is going to be this part here. So if I go up to my graph and then read that off, uh, I can see that actually uh, we're looking more like 35, 36, 37 people. Uh, so I would have said 37 people. So 37 people. 60 percent of this group have a weekly wage of 360 or less. So I would say no. But I would say no. Uh, no. Only, uh, what did I say? 37. Only 37 out of the group. Group are 360 pounds or less okay question 13 liquid a liquid b liquid are mixed to make liquid c liquid a has density of 70 kilograms per meter cubed liquid a has a mass of 1400 kilograms liquid b has a density of 280 kilograms per meter cubed liquid b has a volume of 30 meters cubed work at the density of liquid c uh, so this is a combined measures question. I tend to view it as my three different liquids, A, B, and C, given that C is a combination. And then I kind of always tend to do a table for this. And I've got three different measurements for density. I've not drawn my table big enough. 
Uh, for density, we've got mass is equal, uh, density is equal to mass divided by volume. So if I look at my density, my mass, and my volume for the three liquids, uh, liquid A has a density of 70 and a mass of 140. Oh, sorry, 1,400. Liquid B has a density of 280 and a volume of 30. Uh, for density, we can't just combine the two densities. Uh, we can combine the two masses because the, I've done that the wrong way around. That would be 30 there. Uh, we can't just combine the densities, so we need to work out the mass of liquid C, work out the mass of liquid volume of liquid C and then use that to work out the density. Uh, so volume is going to be equal to mass divided by density. Uh, so that's going to be uh, 220. Um, for this one, mass is going to be equal to density times by volume. Uh, so 28 times by 3 is going to be Uh, 8400. Uh, so from there, we can work out the combined mass. Uh, so the combined mass is going to be 9800. And the combined volume is going to be 50. So our density for liquid C is going to be uh, 9800 divided by 50. I'm going to make that easier for myself and divide it by 5. Uh, so that's going to be equal to uh, 4196. So 196 kilograms per meter cubed. <laughs> And for a combined uh, compound measures question, I will always tend to do a table like that. Uh, it can be done with density, it can be done with pressure, or it can be done with speed. Okay, question 14. Sally plays two games against Martin. In each game, Sally could win, lose, or draw. Uh, in each game, the probability that Sally wins is 0.3 the probability that Sally draws 0.1 work out the probability that Sally will win exactly one of the two games played against Martin uh, so in effect if you view this as a probability tree diagram I'll put the probabilities in later and we'll call it win lose actually it should be win lose draw win lose draw win lose draw uh, probability that she will win exactly one game uh, that would be kind of those two branches. I'm going, to, I'm going to do this slightly differently without the probability tree diagram. Probability that she wins the first match is going to be 0 0.1. Yeah, 0 0.3 times by 0 0.7. Uh, that's going to be the probability of win followed by any outcome. Uh, she could draw the first match, which would be 0 0.1, and then win the second match, which would be 0 0.3. Or she could draw, uh, or she could lose the first match, which would be 0 0.6, and then win the second match, which would be 0 0.3. Uh, so those outcomes are going to be uh, 0 0.3 times by 0 0.7 is going to be 0 0.21. Uh, 0 0.1 times by 0 0.43 is going to be 0 0.03. And then uh, 0 0.3 times by 0, 0 0.6 times by 0 0.3 would be 0 0.18. And then if we add those up together, uh, we would get... Not point four two. So again, that first branch is the probability that, that she wins, followed by any outcome. The second branch is that she wins, uh, loops, draws, and then wins. And then the third outcome is she loses, then wins. And then we just add them up.
Uh, we could have done it with the tree diagram. We would have needed an extra three branches in the middle there, um, and it just became overly complicated. Okay, question 15. Straight line L1 has equation y is equal to 3x minus 4. The straight line L2 is perpendicular to L1 and passes through the point 595. Uh, uh, work out the equation of L2. Uh, so if it's going to be perpendicular to L1, then if L1 has a gradient that is 3, line 2 is going to be the perpendicular gradient, so it would be minus a third. So we've got a general equation for L2 as y is equal to minus the third x plus c. And we know that it passes through the point 9, 5. So 5 is going to be equal to one, minus one third of 9 plus c. Uh, so that's going to be minus 3. So 8 is going to be equal to c. So my equation is going to be y is equal to minus a third x plus 8. Okay then, uh, question 16. So Shirley wants to find an estimate for the number of bees in a hive. On Monday she catches 90 bees, she puts a mark on the bees and returns them to the hive. On Tuesday she catches 120 bees. She finds that 20 of these have been marked. We work out an estimate for the number of bees in the hive. Um, I, I never tend to overly complicate this capture recapture. Um, uh, we're looking at the proportion that are caught each time. Uh, and I tend to do it the, the kind of the opposite way around just to make things easier for myself. Uh, so if I do um, as a fraction the total, the population over the number caught. And now the, the ratio, the, the fraction will be e, e, equal during both catches. So out of the whole population the first time, 90 have been caught. The second time out of 120, 20 of them had already been caught. Uh, and then we can just kind of simplify that. Uh, so 120 divided by 20 is going to be equal to 6. And then 6 times by 90 is going to be equal to 540. Um, so I, I always go for the capture recapture that way. Uh, I see a lot of people doing it the, the, the fractions the other way around. Uh, which just involves an extra step in simplifying it. Uh, Shirley assumes that none of the marks have been rubbed off between Monday and Tuesday. If Shirley's assumption is wrong, explain what effect this would have on your answer to part A. So in effect, that would me mean a greater number here. So uh, rather than catching 20 with marks on, uh, if some had been rubbed off, this number here could be larger. That would have the overall effect of making the population um, smaller. So uh, if she caught more with the tags on here, let's say for example that was now uh, 40, so 20 had been rubbed off. If that was 40, this number here would be smaller. It would be uh, 3. Uh, so this population would be smaller. Uh, so the population would be smaller. would actually be smaller. Okay then, uh, question 17, we'll just finish up the paper now. Right, um, so make f subject to this formula. Uh, so to do, do this, I need to get rid of the denominator here. Uh, so if I call it and multiply at the bracket at the same time, df minus 4d is equal to, and I'm going to multiply at the second bracket at the same time, 3 minus 3f. And then I'm going to take all my f's over to one side and everything else over to the other side. So I'm going to, on, in one step, I'm going to add 3f and minus 4d at the same time. Uh, so that would give me df plus 3f is going to be equal to 3 plus 4d. Uh, then I'm going to factorize. So f times by d plus 3 is going to be equal to 3 plus 4d. And then divide both sides by d plus 3 gives me f is going to be equal to uh, 3 plus 4d divided by d plus 3. Um, 
Okay, uh, question 18. Uh, X is proportional to the root of Y, where Y is greater than zero. Uh, y is increased by 44%. Work out the percentage increase in X. Um, so setting this up as a direct proportion equation isn't particularly useful here. Uh, if you use it in, in effect looking at ratios. Um, so after the increase, Y has been uh, multiplied by 1.44. That would be a 44% increase. So actually, because we've got the root of Y, uh, the square root of 1.44 is uh, times by 1.2. So we've times actually we've times that proportion by 1.2. So we'd get 1.2x. So x has been increased by 20% because uh, 1.2 is equal to 120, which is a 20% increase. Uh, if you didn't spot it like that and you tried to use the equation, it became very tricky. Okay, question 19. Uh, so our functions question, uh, f and g are functions such that blah, 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 blah. Uh, find a g of 5. Uh, so in effect, g of 5 is going to be equal to 3 lots of 2 times 5 plus 1. So that's going to be 3 lots of 11, so 33. Uh, find g of f of 9. Um, so we don't need to combine them. Uh, all we do is, if I start by finding G f of 9, f of 9 is going to be 12 divided by root 9, which is 12 divided by 3, which would be 4. And then g of 4 is going to be equal to, g of 4 is going to be equal to 3 lots of uh, 2 times 4 plus 1. So that's 8, 9. So that's going to be 27. Um, this one, so I thought this was a bit of a, if you spotted it, this was a bit of light work on the, the paper, uh, but it wasn't particularly easy to, easy to spot. Uh, you, in theory, are supposed to find the inverse, so you would need to rearrange this equation. Uh, but the other way you could look at it is just say that the output was 6. If the output is 6, what would the input be? So 3 lots of 2x plus 1. Uh, so uh, 2 is going to be equal to 2x plus 1. Minus 1 from both sides. So x would need to be equal to a half. Uh, question uh, 20, show that this can be written as this, where a and b are integers. Uh, so I would simplify this as much as I could to start with. Uh, so root uh, 180 is going to be equal to uh, 5 times 36. Uh, so that's going to be 6 root 5 minus 2 root 5 divided by, and I'm going to factorize this, 5 lots of root 5 minus 1. Uh, so that becomes 4 root 5 over 5 lots of root 5 minus 1. And then uh, I'm going to rationalize the denominator by times in by root 5 plus 1 on the top and the bottom. I've not written that particularly well. That root should only go over the 5. Uh, so uh, my top line then becomes uh, 5 root 5 times by root 5 plus 1 divided by 5 lots of, and then if I complete the square there, that's going to give me 5 minus 1. Uh, and then my top line is going to give me uh, 4 root 5 times root 5 is going to be 4 times 5, that's going to be 20, and then root plus 4 root 5 divided by uh, 20. Uh, 20 divided by 20 would be 1. And then uh, uh, root 5 over 5. I think. Yeah. 
Okay, question 21. Okay, uh, so we've got DEF is a triangle, uh, P is the midpoint of DF, Q is the midpoint of DE, A to, uh, F to D, F to D is A, F to E is B. Use a vector proof to prove that DQ and EF are parallel. Okay, uh, if I start putting in a bit of information, so uh, D to F, D to F is equal to A, and then F to F to E, F to E is equal to B. Just double checking. F to D is A, F to E is B. Yeah, prove that. P to Q, P to Q, I'm just going to change colour for that. P to Q and D to F are parallel. Okay. Um, so, obviously I don't need to work out E to F. Uh, P to Q is kind of what I'm going to look at. So, I'm going to say that uh, D, to, D to E, D to E is going to be equal to minus A plus B. So D to Q is going to be half of that because it's a midpoint. Um, and then I'm going to say that uh, P to Q, P to Q is going to be equal to a half of A. No, let me just rewrite that. Is going to be equal to uh, P to D plus P D to Q. So that's going to be equal to a half A plus a half of minus A plus B, which is going to be equal to a half A minus a half A. It's just going to be equal to a half B, which is equal to a half of uh, a half of FE, because so a half of FE. And therefore, they must be parallel. Therefore, PQ and FE are parallel. As a multiple of each other. Okay, uh, question 22, diagram shows two shaded shapes, A and B. Uh, shape A is formed by removing a sector of a circle of radius 3x minus 1 from a sector with a radius of 5x minus 1. Uh, shape B is in the diameter of a circle. The area of shape A is equal to the area of shape B. Find the value of x. Uh, if I work out the area of shape B to start with, so B is going to be equal to a half. Uh, not a half, um, pi r squared, pen's gone, 
Um, so that's going to be pi times by the radius squared, and the radius is uh, half of that, so 1 minus x squared. I'm going to leave it like that for now. Uh, if I look at the area of the other one, um, in effect, if I viewed it as a full, full, full circle, and take the little circle out and then look at it as a fraction. Um, so the full circle, if it was a full circle, it would be uh, pi times by uh, 2x minus, no, not 2x, 5x minus 1. 5x minus 1 all squared. Uh, but from that, we'd need to take away uh, 3x minus 1 all squared. Not really explained that very well. So if I was looking at the full circle, with the smaller circle in the center. The full circle, the radius of the full circle would be uh, 5x minus 1. The radius of the smaller one, we've already said, is 3x minus 1. So if I want the area of the full circle, it would be, uh, the area of the full circle would be pi times by 5x minus 1 all squared the area of the smaller circle would be equal to pi times by 3x minus 1 all squared. So the total area of those is if you subtract them, it would be pi times by 5x minus 1 all squared minus 3x minus 1 all squared. We don't want the full circle. We want 45 out of 360. So we want uh, one eighth of it. So in effect, what we're saying is the area of this is equal to the area of this. So tidy that up a bit. So the area of A is equal to the area of B which would look like this pi times by x, 1 minus x, all squared is equal to pi times by 5x minus 1 all squared minus 3x minus 1 all squared divided by 8. Cancel out the pies, and then in effect, I'd multiply through by 8. And then let's multiply out the brackets then. So 1 minus 2x plus x squared is equal to... Uh, 25x squared minus twice the product 10x plus 1 minus 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. Then I need to tidy everything up. Gosh, when I tidy everything up, we end up with... 25 minus 9 is 16, minus 8, we would end up with, let's do it, 8 minus 16x plus 8x is equal to 25x squared minus 10x plus 1 minus this is just getting a bit complicated. Minus 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Right, my x squared is 25x squared. Minus 9x squared is 16. Minus 8 is 8x squared. My x is, I've got 
10 uh, minus 10 plus 6 would be minus 4 plus 16 would be 20 Check that again. Four, Twenty. Feel like I've gone wrong somewhere. Um, so back up to here, um, so I've got 25x minus 9x is 16, minus 8x would be 8x squared. If I look at my x's now, I've got minus 6, uh, sorry, minus 10 plus 6 is minus 4. Um, minus 16, sorry, minus 4 plus minus 16 is minus 12x. And then my number part is... That's plus 1 minus 1, so that is just 8. Just checking my number part. Minus 8. Uh, so if I'm saying that's equal to 0, I'm just going to change paint colour over here. Uh, so, in effect, I'm going to say that 0 is equal to 8x squared minus 12x minus 8. If I divide both sides by 4 to start with, uh, that would give me uh, 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. If I then look to factorise that, it's going to go into two brackets. Uh, sorry, I think I've missed my negative out. No, that's right so far, except for... That was plus, and I've changed it to minus for some reason. If I'm then looking to factorise that, that's going to go into two brackets. Both brackets starting with 2x and x. Two numbers that multiply together to make minus 2 has to be 2 and 1. Uh, to make the combination of plus 3, it's got to be minus 2 there, and then 1 there. Uh, sorry, the other way around. Plus 4 and then minus 1. And then my two values then is x is equal to either a half or minus 2, but x can't be negative, so x has got to be equal to a half. Not a very nice question. Okay, uh, question 23. <laughs> Guessing it's not going to get easier. Right, question 23. Here are four types of cards in the game. Each card has a black circle or a white circle or a black triangle or a white triangle. Okay, so we've got four types of cards. Uh, express the total number of cards. So we've got a ratio of number of cards with a black shape, number of cards with a white shape as 3 to 5, number of cards with circles to number of cards with triangles 2 to 7, Express the total number of cards with a black shape as a fraction of the total number of cards with a triangle. Okay, um, not a massive fan of these questions. They always kind of confuse me a little bit. This fraction has got eight parts. Uh, this fraction has got nine parts. Um, so... Express the total number of cards with a black shape as a fraction of the total number of cards with a triangle. Okay, so if I kind of look at this, uh, I'm going to look for the lowest common multiple of these two numbers, which is going to be 72. Uh, so if I convert these all to be in fractions of 72, just to start with... So, black to white 
is uh, times the both of them by 9, 27 to uh, 45. And then circles to triangles, uh, we've got uh, 2 times by 8 is 16, 7 times by 8 is 56. So in effect, this is going to be my ratio. 27 over 56. When I combine the ratios. Yeah. That's... Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Feels like it should be a lot harder than that. Okay. Um, this brings us to the end of the paper. Uh, this is the skills map, uh, which is quite useful if you really want to drill down into it. Uh, so if you're looking at uh, that question that we were struggling with at the end, uh, it was uh, that arc and length question. Average mark for that was 0 0.31 out of the five marks uh, quite interesting um, so I uh, hope you found that useful uh, in theory then uh, these are the grade boundaries for that paper so this was paper 1F uh, out of the 80 marks they were suggesting uh, you needed roughly 63 for the 9 52 for the 8 42 for the 7 32 for the 6 22 for the 5 and 13 for the 4 so, I hope you found that useful. Um, thank you for your time in listening and subscribe if you like.